As a Sufi Muslim, I'm very ruffled by the title of your book. Of all the titles that you likely had at your disposal, did you have to settle for the uh, literal negation of Allahu Akbar? Yes. As I've said, I, I think that all religions are wrong in the same way, in, in that they privilege uh, faith over, over reason, but they're not all equally bad in the same way all the time. I mean, if I'd been writing in the 1930s, I would certainly have said that the Roman Catholic Church was the most dangerous religion in the world because of its open alliance with fascism and anti-Semitism, which the damage from that our culture has never recovered from and, and never will. But at the moment, it's very clear to me that the, the most toxic form that religion takes is the Islamic form. Because remember, Islam makes one special claim for itself. All religions claim to be revealed truth. They all, all are founded by divine revelation. But Islam rather dangerously says, ours is the last and final one. If you remember Dick Gregory, the older comrades here will, great black comedian and civil rights activist, when he came to write his memoir, he called it nigger. Right. It upset a lot of people, including his old mum, who called him and said, why are you doing this? And he says, mama, every time you hear that word again, they're selling my book. <laughs> <laughs> so every, every Allahu Akbar reminds people that we're in a very serious struggle we're a very depraved religion. Do you believe that that God, if he's provided everything for you, has rights on your life? No. Because? Why should he? Where, what gives him his right? Because he owns you. He's created everything for you. He's kept well, you alive. Want to be owned. I don't want to be owned, and I don't recognize anyone's right to own me. So ownership is a bad thing? Of people, yes. Oh, okay. It's been widely considered. I mean, I know, I know the Bible does call for slavery, as it calls for genocide, but that doesn't make it right. Christopher, have you, have you ever prayed? Once for a hard-on. <laughs> uh, Peter de Vries is very good on this. He says people used to be pagans and polytheists and believe in multiple gods. And then they started believing in one god and they're getting nearer the true figure all the time. <laughs> uh, this is progress. So when I say, in, as the subtitle of my book, that I think religion poisons everything, I'm not just doing what publishers like and coming up with a provocative subtitle. I mean to say it infects us in, the, in our most basic integrity. It says we can't be moral without Big Brother, without a totalitarian permission. It means we can't be good to one another without this. We, we must be afraid. We must also be forced to love someone who we fear. The essence of sadomasochism. Uh, not scorning the, the three delightful Children who result, who are everything to me and who are my only chance of a, even a glimpse of a, a second life, let alone an immortal one. And I'll tell you something, if I was told to sacrifice them to prove my devotion to God, if I was told to do what all monotheists are told to do and admire the man who said, yes, I'll gut my kid to show my love of God, I'd say, no, fuck you. But you've made the worst concession already. You've already said you're a slave. So well, absolutely. After I, that, I, after I, that. Mere, mere obedience to orders is a, is a small offense. I readily admit that I'm a slave. I'm a slave of, uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad of your chains. Yeah, well... Uh, it's absolutely fine for you, but you must leave me out of it. I don't want to be told that I have to obey these laws too, or that my children have to be taught this in school, or that laws have to be written to gratify the, the bizarre beliefs of a cult like yours. So what if God actually exists, sir? Would he not have been good to you? No. Uh, he wouldn't, because if that were true, it would mean that I had an eternal supervising parent who would never die and let me get on with my life, never let me grow up, would keep me under surveillance. But you have, sir. And supervision every, every minute of my but, life. But and you constantly have. Ask, and constantly ask me to be thanking and praising him. Yeah. I well, think it would that be, wasn't part like, of the scenario. Like living in North Korea, I, I, I think it would be a horrible outcome. Well, not sure that, that, that God is Kim Jong-il, but what if what I said is well, true? Well, uh, Kim Jong-il, he has a different opinion. How sure am I of, of my own views? Don't take refuge in the false security of consensus and the feeling that whatever you think, you're bound to be okay because you're in the safely moral majority. I actually just had one small question, which is, Christopher, how are you feeling? Oh, well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you for asking. Um, well, I'm dying, um, but... <laughs> but so are you. Uh, <laughs> if someone tells me that I've hurt their feelings, I, I, I say, well, I'm still waiting to hear what your point is. Right. I'm very depressed how in this country you can be told, 
That's offensive, as if those two, st those two words constitute an argument <laughs> or a comment. Not to me, they don't. And I'm not running for anything, so I don't have to pretend to like people when I don't. <laughs> well, I, I want to make it clear in our closing moments here, Christopher. I don't consider you an enemy. I don't consider you... Uh, but I'm very sorry to hear that. Well, I know, because you want me to be your enemy. And you're well, you no, you, excuse me, you are my enemy. Well, but you're not my enemy. Uh, I, 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 How are you going to figure that? No, because I don't feel a need to have to silence Christopher Hitchens. So, well, it, you don't have a chance of doing that. I don't mean that at all, but I mean your, your, your preachments are evil and they're a direct threat to the survival of civilization. So you, if you don't consider me an enemy, you don't know an enemy when you see or hear one. It's, it's probably the stupidest thing the human race does is to look for patterns in this way and say when a baby falls out of a high-rise building and bounces on the grass below, that must be God. And when uh, millions of children die every day for the lack of pure drinking water and just die of diarrhea in a banal manner, that's because God moves in a mysterious way or isn't involved at all. So I think we're off to a racing start, ladies and gentlemen. So many times you've brought up women in Islam. I'd just like to correct that I've read the Quran and all Muslim scholars would agree with me that Islam gives women a lot of rights. I mean, Absolutely. I am a young Muslim woman myself. I sit before you, I have a voice and I can speak to you and I can look you in the eye. And when I go to Iran, I'm actually Iranian as well, so when I go to Iran, I also have my rights. I need it to be heard that the Quran, the Quran, Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us our rights. In people, individuals in countries and people who represent our religion may not, and they may do the wrong thing to um, sort of stand in front and show us religion and preach us religion, okay. but Islam does. All right. We're going to take that as a comment, a very passionate one at that. Okay. Well, no. You're, uh, hang on. No, we're not. No, we're not going to take it as a comment. I can, I can see your face, I can see your hair, and I can see you sitting in an audience with young gentlemen. Don't you tell me you can do any of that in Iran. I can, though. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you cannot. I can. In Iran. In Iran. In the Islamic Republic of Iran, where I have you been, could, my I hair would see your be hair. out. My no. hair would be out because my veil would be little. My hair would be out. It may be covered a little bit, but just like in, in, oh, in the on. Bible, in the leather... The idea of God, God speaks to some illiterate merchant warlord in Arabia, and he's able to write this down perfectly, and it contains the answers to all... You know, don't, don't, don't waste my time. It's bullshit. But, but you're saying this... Christopher, I've, I've got to call you down on refer, referring to circumcision as genital mutilation. My son cried more at his first haircut than he did at his bris. Statistically, the, the only long-term effect that it seems to have on people is it increases their chances of winning a Nobel Prize. I can't, um, I can't find the, the um, compulsory... Uh, mutilation of the genitals of children a subject for humor in that way. I was to say to you just now, my little girl cried more at her first haircut than when I cut off her clitoris. What would you think of me if I was to say such a disgusting thing? That a person as humane as yourself can sit here and, be, and think of that as a fit subject for humor shows what I mean. Religion makes morally normal people say and do disgusting and wicked things, and you've just proved my point for me in error to say that AIDS is bad as a disease, very bad, but not quite as bad as condoms are bad, or not as immoral in the same way. Francis Collins says at least 100,000 years. We can show we've been around for that long. It's quite a long time. I'll take, I'll take 100. Never mind. I don't need a quarter of a million for my point. 100,000 years, people have been, our species have been around on, on this spec. Born, usually dying, actually, a great number of them in childbirth wouldn't have got beyond being born. For the first 80 or so, 90 or so thousand years, nearly 100, not living more than 25 to 30 years at the most, then probably dying of their teeth, if they were lucky, or of the other needless mammalian things that show us that we bear the stamp as Darwin put it of our lowly origin, the appendix we don't need anymore, innumerable other shortcomings of our design. Um, uh, terrible d disease, suffering, misery, malnutrition, and fear. Where do the earthquakes come from? Why is there an eclipse? What are the shooting stars doing? And war, and rape, and the kidnap of other peoples, and the enslavement of them. All of this goes on. For the first 97, 98,000 of this, heaven watches with indifference. Oh, there they go again. <laughs> They've all... This, that whole civilization has just died out. Well, what are you going to do?
they're raping each other again. They've, they've, they're poisoning. The, they think that the other tribe has poisoned the well, so they're going to kill all their children. All this, just watch all that. 3,000 years ago at the most, it's decided, no, we've got to intervene now. Ask yourself if you really wish it was true that there was a celestial dictatorship that watched over you from the moment you were born, actually the moment you were conceived, all through life, night and day, knew your thoughts, waking and sleeping, uh, could, could in fact convict you of thought crime, the absolute, uh, the absolute definition of a, of a dictatorship, can convict you for what you think what you privately want, what you're talking about to yourself, that monitors you like this, under permanent surveillance, control, and supervision, and doesn't even let go of you when you're dead, because that's when the real fun begins. <laughs> now, my question is this. I, my question to you is this. Who wishes that that were true? Who wants to lead the life of a serf in a celestial North Korea. And I suppose I should add that they don't threaten to follow you after you're dead. You can leave North Korea. You can get out of their hell and their paradise by dying. Out of the Christian and Muslim one, you cannot. I wanted to do this, uh, do this sitting down, but I, it's the old demagogue in me. Um, I need the pulpit. I need the podium. And if I can't be erect, at least I can be upright. Um, <laughs> By the way, do you know why the, why the Amish girl, the Amish girl, the Amish girl was excommunicated? Two Mennonite. Um. Religionists and um, evangelicals say to me, but you don't understand, we have a mission for you. You need to be saved. What shall I answer them? God, well, I mean, the second bit of the question is very easy to answer. I mean, uh, tell her to fuck off. <laughs> Let's look at another example. There's a, a place called the Oasis here in Sydney. It's a shelter for uh, young homeless people. It's at the heart and soul of this place is a Salvation Army captain uh, called Paul Moulds and his wife. Now, they're non-judgmental as far as I can see. They don't seem to be pushing their religion. Essentially, they practice their faith by helping others. So... Can that be poisonous? No, but in what sense in that case is it religious? Again, you're saying these people are so nice they're hardly religious at all. I want to live my life taking the risk all the time that I don't know anything like enough yet, that I haven't understood enough, that I can't know enough, that I'm always hungrily operating on the, on the margins of, of a potentially great harvest of future knowledge and wisdom. Take the risk of thinking for yourself. Much more happiness, truth, beauty and wisdom will come to you that way. Thank you.